My name is Joy Reidenberg. I'm a comparative anatomist and a professor at the Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai in New York. Sludgy was a minke whale. Minke whale is a whale that looks kind of like a blue whale, but in miniature form. So it's a very, very tiny whale, and it's one of the smallest of the whales that live off of our coastline. So Sludgy is kind of a not very pretty name to give an animal, but the reason Sludgy was named that is Sludgy had this very weird behavior of plunking her head into the mucky, silty mud at the bottom of the bay. And I got the call late at night saying, I need to be at the site early in the morning so we can perform this dissection. And the reason I was going down there was to help them figure out why the whale had died, but also to try and recover tissues from the whale that we could then use for research. This enormous ship pulls into the dock area, and then this crane lifts up this tiny little thing. And they, they brought this and they laid it down on the dry dock. And the first thing that struck me about the animal was, yes, it was small. Secondly, it was in beautiful shape. But the other thing that struck me about it that was very sad was that it was a very young animal, which meant that this animal was either extremely sick or something had happened that it got separated from its mother because it looked to me like it was a calf that was probably still nursing around that age. So we did this necropsy in a very different way than we do our normal necropsies. And the reason was because we knew it was a really, really fresh animal and it was a really small animal. We very rarely get small animals. And that meant that we could record something that we had never recorded in our other whale dissections. We could record the positions of the organs in this animal. I could get up on an elevated platform, look down on it and photograph everything as it unfolded. And that's something that was really precious data to me because we're trying to put together an atlas of whale anatomy. So you are looking at Sludgy's skull. You happen to be seeing the front end of the skull, which is from here, the tip of the skull, all the way to the back where the neck begins. What's actually happened is that this bone has been taken away to expose the area where the brain was. So the brain sat in this pocket right over here. It's a little bit smaller than a basketball in this area right here. And all of this bone here was chopped away so that the brain could be taken for research. On either side of the skull cavity was the ear region. And those were also taken for research. So each one of these chunks here and here had an ear bone in it as well as the surrounding tissues and bones, which form part of the joint for the back of the jaw. So that's why we're seeing the back of the jaw sticking out here, and there's nothing for it to articulate with because that's been taken away for research. And we were able to take the ear region off of this animal from both sides intact, and it was fresh enough, again, another rarity, that we could get some really delicate information about how this animal hears, the mechanism inside the ears. You have to examine it on the microscope. But it's a very hard area to get to on a whale skull. And on a big whale, it just takes forever to dissect down to that area. But on a small whale like this, it was doable. We can actually take the whole parts out. And because they were small, put them in buckets of preserving fluid, formalin, fix it right away, and then ship that off to the researcher who's working on ears. So in addition to me, there were two other research labs that benefited from the tissues that I know of. And I think there were additional other ones that were collected on site, tissues for other labs. and it was. Those tissues were sent out to multiple researchers. The Gowanus Canal is famous, but one of the things it's famous for, unfortunately, is it's not a great place to swim. It's full of all kinds of stuff that you never want to encounter. But that apparently has nothing to do with why Sludgy came into that area or why Sludgy died. Because whatever toxins are floating around in the Gowanus Canal, it would take a while for that to actually affect any animal that was in that area. So you have to kind of scratch your head and wonder, why is the animal dead if every organ looks good? The only thing that we saw over and over again was nothing in the stomach. We saw nothing, and the stomach has multiple chambers. So each time we examined a different part of the stomach, there was nothing in it. And the whale's external body form looked a little bit skinny to us. So the only thing that we could assess from this was that this whale probably was not nursing at its mom if it was a nursing calf, or if it was actually eating solid food, it hadn't been eating solid food right before it stranded. So it was in a weakened condition. And in that weakened condition, it was behaving very erratically, you know, very unusual kind of behavior, and eventually, it, which caused it to end up stranded in the Gowanus Bay. Whenever an animal dies before its time, that's a tragedy. And the story of Sludgy is a tragedy because it was a baby animal that died way before her time. But there is a silver lining because Sludgy's death was not without some purpose. We were able to get so much scientific information from Sludgy's body 
And we are just so proud that we were able to have so many different specimens support so many different research projects. So Sludgy did contribute to a much greater scientific purpose. And for that, we're very thankful.